Alright. Lynn, you go. So everybody, uh, this is my name and my email address. So after the class, we want to have um, a homework, just something to play with the RDF. So if you have any questions, you can email me on that email address or you can come to uh, my, my lab at uh, 372. So in this, uh, in this week, I'm going to cover just the introduction and a very basic uh, understanding about the RDF, RDFS, and Sparkle. Even though like uh, we have we, we have two classes, but we need to cover like three parts. I'm, I will try to finish them in a week, so that like next week you can move on with something else. Um, this is the um, semantic web architecture diagram. Um, it, um, you can see that like all of the, the set of uh, technologies that are built in the layers. Uh, people also call it like a uh, semantic web cake layer. I don't think it's, it's a piece of cake, but um, uh, over, I think the semantic web is uh, grown up in like 14, 15 years, but some of that I think they're not mature and a lot of research has been going on. And uh, this is the uh, focus of our class. We work on the RDF, the RDFS, and Sparkle. So if you see from this, um, this, like, this uh, architecture, on the bottom is the URI and IRI. So that means like um, the foundation of the semantic web is using the, the res URIs as a resource, um, uniform resource identifier. One example of that is the web URI, right? So when you click on any link on the web, that can be uh, seen as a, as a URI. Um, on top of the URI, we um, the XML is it is presented there. So why it is not like uh, why the RDF is not completely over uh, the XML? The reason of that is RDF is the RDF. RDF is a data model that can allows us to uh, express the knowledge in the form of triples. This this data model is very simple, as you see, like along the. So. RDF, it can be serialized into like many other forms. It doesn't have to be XML. Although it starts with XML. It, start, it started by, I think, um, they were, originally they wanted to annotate the metadata of the web page. And then like, uh, it has been developed like uh, uh, very much beyond that uh, metadata annotation. <coughs> so since RDF provides a foundation for um, RDFS, Fargo, and uh, RU, and ontologies on top of that. So today we'll cover the first one. And the next class, we will cover the RDFS, means like RDF schema. And Sparkle means that it provides us a language so that we can query um, the RDF data. In, in a very similar manner that we use uh, SQL, right? Structure, query language, to query the relational database. I don't know if you are familiar with the RDBMS, but Sparkle is very much similar to that. The only difference is now we are querying the graph instead of uh, relations. So, um, we will we will start with the. Um, uh, so, any of you have you, uh, has any of you work with the? The web application development, or 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 like just say semantic web. Like, ha have you came over like any uh, any um, application like data set that comes with RDF? No. So this is your first time. Right. He's not. <laughs> about the RDF and then like, there will be one homework so that we um, like you can like uh, practice working on some exercise to get used to with what RDF is, how to create the RDF triples and 
then in the next class, we will be able to write a Sparkle queries and um, to learn about the RDF schema and to put the constraints on the RDF tables. So, so what is RDF? RDF stands for a Resource Description Framework. So basically, it, it, it is a framework that descri describes resources, right? I simply like that. So what is the resource here? It can be anything. It can be like um, it can be the chair in the room, or it can be um, it can be like your laptop, or like anything, any physical or even abstract entities that can be described with the um, with the RDF. So you can describe that by uh, giving it um, a URI just to assign it by assigning the, the URI or identifier to a thing, you can refer to that and describe that by associating associating that resource with the RDF reports. So when we start with when they started with the RDF, these are the these are the goals that they were trying to achieve. I think that is very um, ambitious. So what they want to have is a very simple data model. <coughs> This one. And indeed, IDF is very simple uh, compared to um, other data model. And then, if you look at the last one, it say it allowing anyone to make any statements about like anything. Very flexible, right? Um, in the middle, there's um, so there's a formal semantics and formal inference, but we are not good. We are not going to cover it today. We will do it uh, on Tuesday uh, to um, go over the mo uh, formal uh, semantics. Indeed, it's a model theoretic semantics. See, because uh, they they started with the ad ad um, with the um, XML based syntax, so that is why the goal, one of the goal they had at that time was using the XML syntax and XML schema data type. So for this RDF uh, part, we, we're going to cover um, the basic concepts of RDF models and uh, some important features of RDF such as uh, serialization, containers, uh, replication. As I said before, because RDF is the growing field, so there will be a lot of research going on. Some of that are not really mature, and we can see uh, we can see some uh, problem in the models of the RDF. But that doesn't stop the RDF becoming um, widely adopted by the community. So, what is RDF model? Simply, let's say. Uh, in your mind, so what are you thinking about? Just say 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 something. What you what you have in mind? In any sentence? Any um, noun? Right. Like like any like uh, when you think, do you think in the sen in sentences or just like broken word? Just say like like you're not thinking at all. She is <laughs> teaching a class. Okay, she is teaching a class. So that is a sentence, right? Simply, <laughs> it is in the natural language. We can transform that one, and we can express that sentence in the array of triples. Simply say like uh, the subject and the subject predicate and the object. So. In the sentence, the subject of a sentence is going to be the subject of the triple. And the verb of that will be mapped to the predicate. And the object will be mapped to like the, the object. <laughs> so they are like quite similar, right? So let's say uh, I thought of like two triples, two sentences that are related to our class. That is like Web Creo is taught by Anisha even though he's still there. <laughs> and the web 
Korea is offering the Form 2014. So these are the these are the two uh, sentences that I will be using as example through the class, right? So in the in the same way that I just explained to you that web trivial now is not so so that would be that would become the subject of the triple, right? And then it's taught by or is up for it would be the um, object uh, it would be the predicate of the triples. Similarly for like and the shape and the form twenty fourteen would be the object. So these are these are simple triples. There would be in the way that we think like uh, every day, right? We don't just have like simple fact like that. We say it's like, like um, who say that Web 3.0 is top and shit? Or who say that uh, Web 3.0 is offered in the form like 2014? How about like, uh, uh, like how about 2013? Or somebody or, or another statement saying that uh, uh, Dr. Shep says that he's going to offer the course in 2015. That sentence is, is more complex than this sentence, right? So we start with this simple sentence and then we move to the more uh, sophisticated one. So the basic, ad so RDF, the, the, ba the basic element of the of RDF, that model is triple, very simple, subject, predicate, object. If you can make it through, you need to use like the RDF element. So there are three kind of, so subject, predicate, object, right? Each of them can be elements of a triple. So in this case, we use the lit URI, literal and plain mode. URIs are identifier for resources. For example, like if you have a home page, right? So that will be um, the, the, the ID, the identifier to locate you on the web, right? Or, and then you will become a resources and somebody may, um, may create some triple to describe you. They may say that like um, you stand in the room like three citizens. So that is also a triple, right? So given given the example that we had before, like uh, here I created some of the uh, URIs, such as like um, we start with the prefix saying that nurses that write that edu and slash courses slash web three web three So that so this is one um, URI, one example of the URI. Similarly, you can create um, you can create other uh, URIs like I'm sure it is hard by uh, is offering. So these are not the unique um, unique URI. You can create any of them. So here in, in, in our class, I just use the prefix noises that write that a you it you. But you can use example.com like anything. So this is uh, the syntax of the URI. The one, um, the, so let's say if you locate a web page on the internet, right? So that is the URI, URL, uh, resource, um, URL, you, unique resource locator, right? So, but the URI, URI is more, um, is more uh, generalized. In the ways that let's say if you look at the syntax of the URI, it starts with a scheme here. This, so usually when we are browsing the web, we are using HTTP protocol. There are some other pro some other protocol too, right? Some for some time you will see like a mail to and then like a colon and email address, or FTP or uh, SSH. There are many protocols like that, and that will fall into the scheme. And the next one of that is like a colon and then slash slash. Authority is like the, you need to provide a user info, maybe the username and the password, and the host and the port. The, the uh, question mark query and then uh, pass fragment. So those are, 
So if you if you uh, develop the a uh, web application, right? You will know that the question mark is for like variable. You say that uh, the query, and then you say let's say some variable and some value if you need to. So that is optional. And the fragment usually it will like um, identify. It will help you to locate uh, one part or one uh, deep, deep section within the page. This is one example. So if we analyze the, the URI that we created, we have a uh, node HTTP is a scheme and uh, noises that write that edu is authority. We may we may put the port number here, but simply like I, I just like ignore the port. And the path causes or faculty or like anything else it would be the, the path of the URI. And you see the lecture, lecture and the RDF, I just put it like uh, for example. That is for the query and the fragment. So the first element of the RDF is uh, the URI for the resources. So the second the second type elements of that is the literal. So let so we need to use the literal or type literal when we need to uh, represent the attribute or the property of a resource. I do want to say that the that um, the year twenty fourteen on the form so. A literal usually like we it has two parts. One is the one is the lexical form and the other one is the data type. So this is one example like some example of the um, uh, lexical form. So these are these are these literal term, one of them is called a uh, literal term. Each of them will be mapped into a little value in the RDF interpreter. Later on, like we will work through the next steps. So here, because we started with the XML, so they decided to use the XML data type. It will include like the date, the number, and a, a lot of them identified here. So when you when you query, let's say um, if you put a number in the in the relational database, right? When you see the when you see the numbers like twenty fourteen or like zero twenty fourteen. So how do you compare the two uh, lex uh, literal term here? So how do you know that they are uh, they, they share the same value or are they actually the same? So if you if you look at this right, uh, 2014 uh, of the type G, uh, year and 2014 excess D G, year, do you think that they are same or different? Same. Same. Yes. Okay. Some some say same. Some say different. So who say same? And who say they are different? Okay, so in this case, the, the crowd is wiser. So they say that, so in the case of a URI, right, if, if the, the string and match, or they are equal, if, <coughs> um, if we compare the two string, character by character, they are same. But in the case of literal, because we have this as a lex lexical form, 2014, but here we have one zero in front of that. So even though for us human, right, we are smart, and then we can easily interpret that it is 2014, but in this, for the machine, it's not. So they are not same. So, and there's another example here. So what do you think about this? Are they same or different? Different? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in this case, so the rule for this is two literal terms are same if they share the same lexical form and data type. Because even though if they share the same lexical form, right, the type will be different. So they need different things. We can say that for for 
let's say uh, 2014 is the is a string is different from like 2014 um, data, for example, they're not same. So the third the third elements of um, this, the third type of area elements are plain code. So so let's say you need somebody on the like in the hall and you don't know that person, right? So you don't know like how to refer to that person, but you still can say that that person is wearing um, a blue shirt. You can express, can you express that kind of information in area or like in, in any form when you don't know who they, who they are? So the good thing about area is it allows that by using, let's say, uh, if you know the URI of the person or the ID of the person, you use that one to refer to them. If you don't know that, you just use a blank note saying that somebody or something. So that is how you do it here. And in order to um, indicate that that is the blank note, that means I don't know the name of that person, I don't know the address of that thing, but I know I know some of the attributes of that thing. And then in that case, we use this one. So we use um, underscore colon and then the some ID. So that means this X is a blank note. And in this case, if we if we go back to the um, to the previous example, right? We have uh, four and twenty fourteen. If we put so in this case, four twenty fourteen are um, it consists of two tokens, fall is semester, and then like um, twenty fourteen for years. If we put both of them into the same port, as a, it's, a, it's a string, and then we cannot uh, we cannot express the relationship between the, the subject and the form and subject and the um, and the year 2014, right? So in order to express that um, relationship, we use the uh, blank note, and then we say there's something that that his semester for in the his uh, semester in the fall and then he's in use 2014, so that means that X, that that thing, right, X, at his semester, uh, at, uh, at his uh, fall semester and of the year 2014. I will go through this again like, later on. So now we know that uh, area model consists of area prepose, and in the area prepose, each of that subject, predicate, object, it must, um, the type of that must be either URI, literal, or um, a blank note. So there are certain rules that we need to follow in order to create the area of people so that people will be able to interpret the meaning of what of our triples. So the rules is like uh, for the subject, it can be URI or blank note. The subject cannot be literal, so remember that. And the second rule is the predicate is always a URI. And the third one is the object, it can be anything. Wait. Sorry. Why? What's the reason? Why predicate should not be? Is there any reason? It just state the rule. Because like, um, can it be, um, for the predicate, it cannot be a literal. Because like, uh, if it is a literal, then you don't know like, it, the, 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 the predicate used to sleep, uh, specify the, the properties or the attribute or the relationship of that, um, between that resource with other resources, right? Um, what I there that is the question. Um, the question that you ask, like why predicate cannot be a blank node? Actually, this is. Huh? 
It can be a plain not either. But but this is this is the this is not um this is not entirely clear to us because we created the rule for the community, right? But because the I think that there was a lot of, there was a paper on that to say if we use the blank node in the um, predicate, um, the uh, complexity of that will reduce from NP to P. Oh no no, it was an NP commit. I forgot about that paper, but there was one ad one advantage of uh, that was one advantage of using the blank node in the predicate, but. But in the um, in the specification, they just say no. And because this is just for the syntax of that, and this syntax will be when you generate a triple, if you load it or validate it <coughs> by any validator or a triple store, they will check the syntax of your triples. If you put um, if you put a literal in the in the predicate, it will just say uh, syntax error. So I think like uh, for now we will just accept it as the rule. So these are some example that we, we, we had before. So um, do you still remember which one is URI and which one is blank node and which one is literal? So which one is URI? First, first, first. The first one? Okay, first two. And then what are the literals? I should put more. But the SQL anyways, IDF is very simple. So there is no more complicated example for that. So now we know like how do we form the triples, right? Is it simple? Is it simple, right? So now we come to the IDF graph. So um, even though they, they use the name graph, they do not define it as the uh, as they do not provide a formal model, formal graph model. So for now, like um, we will just we just go over like what is there in the specification. If you are interested in like discussing the limitation of RDF, then like we may we may spend like like 10 or 15 minutes on that like, at the end of this. Actually this is my thesis top dissertation topic. So if you are if you if you have any questions you are welcome to discuss. So for now they say the RDF graph is a set of RDF triples. That means like um, the set of nodes. So in, in this the subject and the object of the triples will become the nodes of the graph. And then the predicate will connect the subject and the object of that triple together like this. And this is the subject, object, and predicate. This is very intuitive um, representation. But when we um, when we use this um, this RDF triples together with uh, RDF S triples, we will see the the challenge. So. We we'll go back to the example that we had before. We have like web three zero is powered by the shared, and then it, it is open the point of the team. So um, it's a, um, this is the URI to represent the cost web three right? And we say this cost is powered by another shared. So this is the triple subject, predicate, and object. And for the second triple, we do we do it in the same way that we have uh, form twenty fourteen, and then notice the product is for offer this uh, predicate. So this is they call it this is the RDF graph. So I was explain I was explaining the why uh, form 2014 is problematic there, right? When you just say form 2014, it is a string. It doesn't know the year of that. It is not human, so it cannot interpret uh, 2014 as the, as the year or fall as the season. So if you just say form 2014 there, it would just say it is a string. 
That means there is no relationship asserted between the web 3.0 and then 4 nor um, 2014 separately. So in order to encode that relationship into RDF repos, we use the blank node here. So let's say we have this is the web repo is a subject, and then we use a blank node saying something, and we say that this cause is offering like a something, and then this thing, his semester for 2014 and uh, his year his semester 4 and then his year 2014. So by this we split the tokens of for 2014 into like two different entities. So in this case we have like four. I think if we can if we can create um, another type for that say seasons and then we know that seasons or semester then we know the type of that. And at the same time we also know like uh, this is the year. <coughs> This is how, this is, if we, if human read the sentence, they will un understand that easily. But it, when it comes to the machine, it's, it's hard to disambiguate, right? Does it, is it just a, some, is it a, a number or is it a year or like, what is it? So this is the way we use the blank node to create the one, one extra entity in between the form and 2014. So do you have any questions about the blank node? So what do you call that one? Uh, this one? Uh, is it a predicate? Which one? I mean, uh, the, uh, the first yes. one is subject, right? Yes, this and is And the last subject. two are like uh, objects. So here we have three uh, triples, right? Okay. So in the first triple, we have this uh, web uh, 3 o is the subject. subject. And then it's offering as the predicate. Uh, predicate. Okay. And then this blank node is the object of and then because because we create two more additional triples, right? So in this in these two triples, the blank node become the subject of of them. It's valid because um, for the rule, they say that the URI uh, for the subject it can be either URI or blank node. So in this case, it's blank node, so it's valid. Uh, one one thing that for all the triples that we create here, you can validate the validate them in uh, W3C IDF validator. It's fun because uh, a lot of time the syntax all of them are right and it's just like because of some special character encoded with the edit into our triples by the by the text editor that caused the problem like double quote. If you use double quote in Word versus uh, a web application you will see the difference. And then, like uh, the all the val validator will cry for that. This say uh, errors, errors, and you have no idea why. It's, it's right. All the specifications say it's right. So one thing to remember when you validate your triples. So is this the same thing as having? Uh, I guess it's not. As, uh, as having two. Oh, never mind. It's, it's a single object with multiple values. Yes. Okay. So they're like multiple attributes to a single object as opposed yeah. to multiple relations to the parent. Yeah. Okay. So similar similar to this is, um, you know, like address, right? Usually we don't have, um, usually for the, it's called any relationship. For one single address, we have what? We have his number, we have um, a street. And then, uh, what is that? Street and then? City. Yeah, city and then state and then country, right? So all of them, like, you, you, need, you need to use the blank dot to represent that kind of object. So no more questions about the blank mode? Okay. Because that will be the exercise. So, um, so we just cover the um, the data model of the RDF, right? This is just the the abstract uh, model. So the um, the model theoretic semantics will come later on with all the formalism. So in the first class, I just want to go with the with the simple idea so that we can grab it and then move to the next one. 
So um, over the years, the um, the community there's um, W3C working group on the IDF, and um, they have developed um, many um, format for the IDF. Like this IDF uh, 1.0, it was released in 20, 2004, like 10 years ago. So at that time, they support uh, officially support the IDF XML and uh, and triples. Total was available at that time, but it wasn't uh, recommended. So this IDF 1.1, that means um, it was released earlier this year in February. So in that, they support. You can see that they they have supported uh, many formats like. Um, IDF8, Total, and JSON, Greek, and Quacks. Actually, there are more, but they're not officially uh, supported by W3C. W3C is the World Wide Web Consortium behind the web. So, um, the three, oh, sorry, the three, the three uh, formats on the right, it involves the graph. That means instead of triples, they want to add one more component and the fourth component into that and they call it like name graph. So because of that, the, they support uh, different end paths is what extension of end triples or total. But because we, we, we do not cover the name graph here, so I will just go over the idea of XML, end triples, and total. Um, Entropos is the uh, simplest uh, format for the IDF. Like it's very easy to um, uh, read and write. But this, because it is so simple, it is not very efficient in a space saving. Turtle is the preferable one for both read and write IDF triples. Let's start with the idea with the entry post. So, usually in one IDF data set, you, you, do you know how many triples? What is the average size of one IDF data set? Like small, medium, and large, and very large. You just large or very large. <laughs> so, the, you know, Not can you. Not comfortable. Not human. Not human. You mean like infinite? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think like for the knowledge that human has is infinite, but in the area form you have to release it and store it somewhere, right? Some somewhere, and that's why like it, it can be like infinite. So this. I have been working with uh, many area ever set and most of the time I created them by transforming the data from like different data models into IDF. And the smallest one I've been working <coughs> with was um, was from uh, one project and the size of that is around 11 million people. And then I, um, I work with another data set from my internship and it, you know, like for, for I was, I, I was scared, I would say like 10 million, this is a lot, right? You can just read them, for sure, and you can just read all of them. And then I, I work with another data set, say 100 million. So for, for, for 10 million, it may be just like a few hundred uh, megabytes if you put them in text. But when you work with, uh, with 100 million triples, that means like 20 gigabytes of text. And um, the one that I'm working with, it has uh, 15 million triples. When you, uh, when you put them in uh, IDF XML and you zip them, it's 100 gigabytes. And after you unzip, uh, I, I, I haven't finished that part, but it already exists uh, 1.2 uh, terabytes because I just have like 500 gigabytes remain, so I cannot extract the, the rest of them, but it's more than two, two terabytes. So that means like, I haven't worked with the, um, the relay.
relational database like the this size, right? Usually we create some simple trip, some some tables in MySQL and then I like, put them create a schema and then I like, insert and delete and we query them, right? So, but when we, when we are dealing with RDF, the size is very important. So. By that, I went through like from a small data set and then like um, uh, medium data set, large and very large. So the the more I work with that, the more you know like when somebody say, "Oh, it's a huge data set," I say, "No, it's not." When you see like other data sets. So because of the size of that, right? We we don't have unlimited resources. The the serialization is very important. That's why the entry post is not the preferable one for a very large data set. You will see the difference in them in terabytes when you are use you are using different uh, formats. So now I I will explain to you like why what what makes them different in the size. So this is in the entry post the this, uh, this is just the syntax of that. They say that uh, the URIs are enclosed in the angle bracket, and the literals are enclosed in the double quote with the added, with the with the the type. And triples are separated by uh, a dot. So, RDF data set indeed is a, a sequence of triples separated by a full stop, simply like that. This is one example. So uh, here, this is the uh, entry post form of our example. Here we say, oh, can you see it? So we say the we start with the subject here with uh, three below, and then it this is taught by double share, and this is that. That means like this is the end of the first triple. And then for the second triple, we say web 3.0 is over in the form 2014. And the other part of that is a string. It is not year or uh, seasons. And the end of that is another dot. So if you have a million triples like that, keep doing it until you finish. So if you if you look at this and triples, right, you see a lot of them are repeated, a part of the URI, right? If you see that like a nurse is not right that right, you cause and then like this is repeated here and on top of that we have nurse is not right that right, you repeated like everywhere. The reason we appended uh, we prepended um, the prefix into this in order to make it as a URI. We just have to do it to to uh, to make it like uh, syntactically correct. So because of that problem, the size problem, and um, they come up with a better representation, like on total. So in this one, in the new in the total format, right, the URI will be shortened by creating the prefix. So let's say here, notice that write up edu or slash courses or uh, faculties, all of them, because they will be repeated many times in the data set. So it's better to like give them like an alias, right? So this is how you create a prefix in the um, total. So you start with, uh, I created four prefix here. Uh, X for nurses that write that edu and then courses, faculty, and then um, um, XML schema data type. So we have four of them. And yes? When you, when you um, name an object that's in a, the prefix, does it just get appended to the URI of the prefix? So when you Let's say this is one prefix x, right? And x is used here. So this is meant to be uh, used by the uh, RDF parser, right? It starts with the file and get on the prefix. And when it goes through, actually it just parse them like line by line, right? For each line, it will interpret or it will get the full form of the URI. And then like, by that, it will get like the the actual URI of the um, 
except Jay God. <coughs> so for now, like for, for storing or serializing, like uh, we can save the space by that way. Or the way that we read or write. But when it comes to um, any parser or query engine, all of them must be the full form of URIs. And if you look at this, you say when you use the prefix, right? We remove the bracket for the URI, no more bracket. If you put them, that would be like a uh, syntax query wrong, syntax error. And in a similar way, like we define the prefix, start with SI prefix, and then the LS for that, and then the, the URI. Actually, this prefix is similar to the namespace in, in, in the XML if you use that. So the purpose of using like namespace is to separate the, the terms or URI from different vocabulary or di just different file or so, in the, so a lot of time you will encounter the situation where you create multiple triples, right? Just for describing one resource. So in that case, this is how you can group them into um, group. If this is how you can group all of the reports that share the same subject into like, into classes with triple that is taught by that shared. And then, if you notice the semicolon at the end of that, that indicate the next one will be. It's going to share the subject with the um, reverse triples. So by that, like uh, you can even like save more, right? It can reduce the size of the, the screen, the, the total screen. And, uh, and let's say um, a resource may have multiple value for the same property. So this is how you can group all of sorry. This is how you can group them, like um, the course web tribunal offering form twenty fourteen and form twenty thirteen or even like more every year, right? So that is um, by using the prefix and grouping um, the triples that share the same subject or sharing the same uh, ob subject and object like that, like we can reduce the size. That is the second uh, format. And the third one is like um, RDF XML. Actually, they start originally they started with the XML, but I say like uh, I didn't start with that because it, I think it is more intuitive to to use the uh, the total or n triples compared to um, RDF XML. So if you look at this, right, it is so hard to read. I said like. Uh, you look at this and tell me like what what is the triples what are the triples here? Can you tell me that? So this is the sub so one example of that is um, this is the subject. So let me let me explain to you this idea of document. So um, when the document starts with uh, XML, which is more XML, you know that is XML, right? But it starts with IDF, colon, IDF, that means this is what IDF document. And these are the namespaces to be used within this document. So they use the namespace IDF and I use I added one X for noses that write that edu, right? So these are the namespace to be used within the um, the within this document. So that means in between this opening tag and closing tag. Not like um, not any outside of these uh, two tags. So you see that X is used and X is taught by or is over. Right, so by that we can read it, we can shorten the URI of the uh, property. So within the RDF document, you see RDF description. That means like uh, 
from here it will start uh, creating or adding the, the sub construct for this uh, cause web triple and this is going to be the subject of the triples and it's taught by here it is the um, the uh, predicate and the value of that the the attribute area resource indicate that is the object of the triple so this is the subject this is the predicate and this is the object so if you look at this area of XML versus total right which one is more intuitive yeah total right so because of that I will give you a live demo of converter so even though they support a lot of like uh, uh, format but we just need to we don't need to know all of them because that is just for the syntax of that. When you have the area of triples in one form, you can easily convert them into like other form. So for example, let's go back to the uh, code. So I will copy this one. Oops. Um, copy this one and use this one. This is the website that they uh, allow you to convert the area of triples from one form to another form. So, oops. And you can see that this is the input format. Like it can be like um, n triples, total, area XML, and uh, there's some other like JSON, but we are not talking about Q. You can also output them into uh, n triples, area of XML, uh, total, any of them. So let's say uh, they can also guess, but they cannot guess n triples. I tried that and this day is just can recognize. But this is a nice website. I don't know who built this, but uh, I think it will be useful for us. Programmatically, you don't need to use this. There, if you are using um, C for programming, you can use a tool called Red, uh, Redland. It will convert the data from one format to Raptor. The right name of that is Raptor. You give it idea five in like any format, it will convert to the other format. So I think that's not a big deal, right? Syntactically, it's easy. So let's say here we use a uh, total, and then like which format mm -hmm. you want to generate. Like XML, right? Because I, uh, this is the XML format of the triples that we created. Can you see it? So I noticed that it didn't use prefixes in the data type. They use the prefix here. But they because I use X because I want to make it more readable to me. But in this case, they just use number. You know, namespace zero, namespace one, namespace two. So this is namespace uh, zero instead of X, right? And then here they have like uh, they have. Oops. This is a uh, web three zero is taught by Dr. and is offer in form two to fourteen. And this is the data type. XML, XML schema string. Right, and you can't, so you can't use prefixes in the data type string? Mm, if we like, can use, yeah, we can use that. So we can do something like XSD on string? And you can use that. Okay. But um, before you do it, they just go and validate the, the syntax of the triples, right? So this is the, uh, and we can also generate, um, what is it, um, n triple. So when we have n triples, now we get the full form of the URIs, longer. A subject, predicate, an object, dash subject, predicate, an object. And the last one is, um, let me see if you graph. Oh, it doesn't generate anything. Okay, I can try that, a PNG. I thought it's so smart, great tool. 
and then I submit and I see the things that it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit disappointed, but uh, it's okay because it auto functions work. Oh, it I is. bet. I bet yeah. that would work if you actually saved it with the right data type. I bet it's coming back with a text data type. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. That's funny. Yeah, but there, there are tools that um, for this, I think it's simple. You just like query the right URI and then like put them into the correct one. Important is like how, like which, which tool that we use to visualize the graph. So this is the converter. So given this, right, I think your um, the exercise will be much easier because like you just put them into this validate and then run. So I will assume that like syntactically I don't need to check for that. So back to another feature of Adia. So when we program, when we do programming, right? Usually we have in mind like uh, before we start coding, we need to think like what kind of uh, data structure that we need to use for for list, like whether we use linked list or map or hash map or like what kind of data structure we need here. So the people they work with, the the originally work with Adia, they had that kind of thought in mind. That is that like how do we store a list of resources or like item or uh, just um, terms? And they came up with this. I'm surprised. Like uh, I've been working with that five years, but I never encounter like uh, in any situation that I need to use this. But still, it's useful to know that they have this feature supported. So similar to our list, link list, or uh, structure, right? They also support the uh, back sequence and alternative. It is simply like for the back, it's just like an order list of resources, and sequence means like orders is important, and alternative, a list of resources are literal that represents alternatives. You know, like I think like if you work with small, very small data set and you need to um, you need to list the thing manually, then you may you may encounter this case. But when you work with very large data set, usually uh, um, I, I haven't seen it. This means that I will never see see it, but like uh, it looked to me that it's not very popular, not useful. So this is an example of still, but we need to look at how it is supported, right? So for the back container, I'm using the um, the uh, ADF XML format so that you will get like familiar with this. So we have the web for your book, and this is going to be the subject because uh, we have the description for that. And the next, um, the outermost uh, proper outermost tag below that is going to be the property or predicate. So we have. Can you see it? And the creator is going to be the property. So this is how we create a graph. So we use the X uh, prefix for this resource, and we have web free of book. So this is the our this is our resource to represent the book. And we create another uh, predicate called this creator. So that means like in this in the four in the four RDF. <laughs> On a uh, the uh, XML block, we are gonna we are going to express the statement saying that this web free of book has two uh, has uh, two creator double shared and double percent, and we start with the subject say web free of book creator is a plain mode because we don't know what what is the what is it called right just say plain mode. And because we say it is a it is a collector, and in this case it's, it's a bag. That means like the order is not important; it's just like a set of items, an order items. And here comes after shared and after percent. This is how you use the bag to represent the set of um, 
the set, yeah, another list means like uh, the set of uh, authors of this book. In a very similar, oh, one thing that because uh, we have this graph, we have this in RDF, um, RDF XML, right? And we have this graph, so I, I think it would be fun to translate this graph into um, the uh, total. So that would be one, uh, this, I think this is uh, the, the second version in the uh, whole book. So give, uh, given, um, given a graph, um, we can translate that into the set of uh, triples using the total syntax. So this is, the, um, this is how we use the set, uh, sequence container to express that this web 3.0 it has uh, three topics, RDF, RDFS, and Sparkle. Like, um, I think it's, this is the open, open list. That means somebody can add more um, items into the uh, sequence. But you see that like for the, three, for the three resources here, right? We just list them with the RDF uh, list item. There's no, there's no difference compared to this one. The only difference is we use a not, we use a different uh, resource for the back or like a sequence. And the last one is the alternative container. So for for one student like uh, we maybe like in one of the three program right either like uh, undergrad, master, or PhD student. Are you both undergrad or master or like two of them at the same time? No? Okay, so this example makes sense then. And this is how we create the graph for this set of uh, triples. In the in the the common the commonality among the three example here is we use the blank node to represent the container, and that blank node has uh, it has RDF one two three, and we use one two three four five until n in order to say that like this list has n. Um, this list has n uh, items. This is different. This is the open list. This is op this is different from the RDF collection, which is the closed list. Closed list means that you cannot add more items into it, and because the way they created, uh, it just you cannot do it like this one. So in the for the same example that we had, right? This uh, book created by, let's say, uh, Dr. Shen and Dr. Versace. So this web for your book, the creator of that is the blank node. But this time, it is not going to be tied as a uh, bag, a sequence, or uh, alternative. It's going to be the first item, the first blank node will have one attribute, say, RDF first. So that you can imagine that um, this uh, RDF collection is similar to the linked list. Where within the linked list, we have multiple nodes, right? One node will have two uh, elements. One is the attribute or the value of that. And the other one is the pointer, pointing to the next one in the linked list. So in this, in this RDF collection, it works exactly like the linked list in our data structure. In that we have like the this the blank node is the first node and this the value of this blank node is double shape and then like it points to the rest. So the rest attribute itself pointing to um, another blank node. And this blank node also put, it has two components or two attributes. One attribute is pointing to the second items in the collection and then another attribute pointing to the none. So it's like, it looks like a link list in the RDF, right? Compared to the uh, the previous like open list that we had before, like that, in this we have like web three or book, creator of that is a blank node, and the type of that is RDF back, right? And then like, we use that blank node, we as we create let's say RDF one chain and RDF two further. So the dif can you see the difference between the two um, the two approaches? Yeah. Do you 
is there a reason to use one or the other? I mean, I know the open and closed part, but I, it feels like the closed one would be a lot of work for very little gain. Yes, yeah. Because, like, uh, if you just, like, if you want to modify anything, right, it's a mess. Like, we need to deal with this, 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 this. It's like we need to follow the link list. And here, and here, if you look at this uh, bag, it is so simple. Like, create one blank note of the bag and then just put all the items into that. And is there a significant difference between having multiple DC creators instead of versus the open bag? So it, it depends, right? If you the uh, for this for the two approaches, there is no one better than the other one, like in like in all the cases. So let's, it depends on the on the, the publisher, right? If I create one other set and I just, I don't want other people to add items into mine, so I think that's fixed, right? Because if I if I use let's say in a program we have uh, three allowed values like undergrad, master, and PhD, and I put that as an open list, and somebody else just put like some crap into that, right? And then like uh, it will like um, it may affect our knowledge base in that way. So because of that, in there are certain cases that we need to use the uh, closed list, and there's some ca certain cases we need to use the uh, open this. So it's up to us. And if you if you can come up with any other approach better than this one, I think like you can write a, a research paper for this. Yeah, I think this is not. I don't like it. I I didn't use it like I I never use it before. But I think like it's worth uh, looking into this. If you if you are if you are doing research in a semantic web, then I think like. The idea of modeling it, it has a lot of open problems, interesting problem. But because like the way people came up with that, right, it has been like there like maybe 10, 15 years, so it, it, it may be hard for them to accept like um, we are new to this, so we, we are fresh, we don't have the bias toward what they had before. So we may, we may, we may be able to come up with better ideas than what they had. So, so in the, um, yeah, I think like for all the features that we uh, presented here, if you can come up with like any other better way, I think that would be great. So uh, we finished with the um, data structure in, in the um, idea. One point that I noticed is that uh, usually we use data structure for, for um, populating the data, right? For storing the data, I, I, I don't know, like uh, for some time we need to serialize the data, but most of the time we use the database, but I, I, don't, I don't really know like why we need to use these uh, collections. I'm still, because I haven't encountered it yet, so I'm still exploring whether we, is there any cases that I miss. But I'm looking into this so that like we can find a better way to represent this data structure in idea. So now we come to another interesting question is that uh, so far we uh, represent simple fact, right? Like simple subject, predicate, and object. But there are cases, and most of the time in our life, right? There is no absolute. There is no statement that is absolutely right. It's always subjective, and even though if it is written in a book, proven somebody, uh, proven by uh, the somebody, and then somebody else just come up and disprove that one. So because of that, I think like in the IDF, we need to express because we will be able to express the opinion, the assertion, and like um, any kind of statement. For example, like this. Uh, we had uh, we had the previous uh, triples, right? A uh, previous statement saying that a web 3.0 course is public domain. And then now, if we want to express the knowledge that um, Rice announced that web 3.0 is 
taught by Dr. Shen. So, how do we represent it in that if? So that means in this case, you say like we want to make the assertion about the triple. But we know that in RDF, we have only three components. We have subject, predicate, and object. So now if we, if we need to talk about subject, predicate, and object, so let's say Rice State University is the subject, right? Because it's start of the sentence, and it makes sense to put it as a subject, and a noun is going to be the predicate. What is the object then? <laughs> so, so Rice State University announced double shape? Then you have nested. And it's thought. Because it's like, like 3.0 yeah. from there, it goes on. Uh, can you repeat that? Like, yeah, can you have nested? So, Rice State announces that, and then that's the rest is the object, and that itself is then the next triple. So oh, okay. So, so this is that, that is a triple? But how do you represent the, how do you represent the relationship between that and the triple? You create a blank. A blank. Yeah, please. All right. So you do a name using the blank. Am I not describing that very like a variable? Yeah, right? yeah, you yeah. Assign okay. It to a variable. Okay, okay, I got it. So you, you have like rice that and now it's some plane, right? And then that plane, how is it related to the triple? It is the, it represents the triple, right? So you define the blank as the triple. How do you? The, I read ahead, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. That means reification. Ah. This is called reification. Like you reify a statement as if it is the resource. And then you um, make the assertion using that resource. So, for if somebody says that, like Rice State University announced announced that Web three or Fuzzy is done by workers and the shit, right? So in this case, what it is not what we want because what we really want to say is Rice State announced that. Web 3.0 course is taught by Dr. Shen. We want to maintain that relationship between the Web 3.0 course and Dr. Shen. And now we just want to add the, the assertion saying that Rice that announced that. It is not been announced that, right? Because Rice that announced that is so much different from I announced that. So this is not what we want. So the next one is the the fit one feature by uh, the RDF recommendation. It say that we so here we say that Reisted announced some statement, right? This is statement one. I just like it is a plain note, so I just put an ID so that we can recognize it. And then for that statement, in order to rep in order to create a relationship between that statement to the real statement that we want to express. They, they provide a mechanism for ratification, means like this statement one is a statement, right? And then it has subject, cause, what 3.0, and then predicate is taught by, and then object, function. So the whole block like this is called ratification. Reification means that like we reify a statement as if it is a resource, and we treat it as a resource. So by that we can create like uh, any um, any other assertion, right? So the whole block is this. It contains four triples. But uh, when I stuck with this, I didn't like it. So I was trying to find another way to represent statement about statement in a better way. So the, the motivation is very simple <coughs> that I'm dealing with billion triples, right? If I have one billion triple and then I need to ratify one, like, one of them, that means just for the ratification, not, not counting the, the assertions that I want to make, I need four billion triples. 
So it's like if I if I have like if I have one terabyte of data, I need four billion of four terabyte of data just for the ratification. So it's not worth. So because of that, like uh, we find um, this is the motivation, and I was trying to find the alternative approach in order to overcome this uh, ratification. So I call it a singular property. So. So the way that I ratify the uh, triple is not from the statement say RDF statement and subject and predicate and object. The way I ratify it is I would say um, I still say a uh, right state announce something right, and then but this thing is not uh, is there, is not a statement anymore. It is a singleton property. So for this property, oh, for this property, I use it instead of if you look at the, the original triples, you see that uh, Web 3.0 is chart by Dr. Shek. But here I'm using X is chart by one faculty Amishek. And then I assert, and then I say this is and the singular property of X is chart by. So the original triple is because Web 3.0 taught by data shape. But I just tweak it a little bit and make it make it uh, two triples, make it in two triples instead of four triples. So basically the, the 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 basic idea of this is like every relationship is unique. Right? The let's say let's say um, your home page and then the, the web for your course your relationship with the course will be like very much different like among of you right some of you like uh, know a little bit about this uh, some topic or um, or you register just simply you register like not on the same date so in order to capture the, the difference different attribute this different uh, relationship, between the resources, right? In this case, let's say uh, the courses uh, web 3.0, it may it may be taught by uh, another professor, or it may be taught by him, but like in another year. So that relationship become like different. Always there is a context. When the context context change, the attribute of that need to be changed accordingly. So that's why like we use uh, this approach. But so, so that. So is a query that, that says find all of the is taught by by Amit Chef, mm -hmm. is that going to return this course as Web 3.0? Yeah. So so there, there is one more thing that we need to do, that is we need to perform the, the reasoning on top of that. Uh, there are two types of reasoning, like forward and backward. But uh, we, we, um, I think we will cover that reasoning part in the next class. But basically, what I'm sa I was saying was like this single property is is a similar property of this. In the meantime, it is also a sub property of the original property. So I will infer the original triple this subject predicate object from the from the set of triples that I have. That is why I can return the original like query. Um, Yes. There are two persons like uh, taught by uh, Dr. Seth and mm -hmm. some other like Prasad. So how the answer would be? The In that case, I will create instead of one, I will create one or one more triple saying that uh, right state announced uh, is taught by two, right? And then I use is taught by two between like cause web three point oh and then like and then Dr. Prasad. So you can you can make it as many as you want. So that is the um, that is not there in the um, IDF, IDF specification. This is just my paper, and I think it's relevant, so I just present it here. And uh, next, uh, I mentioned some of the tools that we uh, I use in my in my work. Right? These are some. I just mentioned some of them, like just like representative, but like you can find a lot of other tools. Like this, like you can transform it from like different data models into the idea. Uh, Jana is the API for you to work with um, IDF in Java. 
very popular. And um, I don't think we have more time, but I'm going to finish in five minutes. So um, at the end in the real world, um, the for all the all the database uh, vendor that uh, we found in the industry, I think like all of them are major database like uh, Oracle DB2 or Oracle DB2 is from IBM. All of them are supporting um, IBM. And uh, for the Sparkle endpoint that we are going to use, we will use the virtual. So I will set it up online so that you can um, insert your triples and then query them. I think we can skip this uh, link of link data principle. I think let's start later on. Anyway, I mean, uh, big data principle is important, but uh, we can skip now and then come back if you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for the for the um, database that we have Right to the main point that I was keep repeating that in the first one we need to translate them. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. So the first one is just translated into adding triples. You don't need to. Uh, you can be as creative as you want. You can create any predicate as long as they are valid adding triples. And you can use the uh, uh, W3C validator. You just search for any validator. Then you can validate the triples that you create, right? So this is for the, the first part. And for the the second part is, um, as I said before, like uh, given the graph, the, the graph like this, um, um, you need to translate them into any triples in the form of total. Total is the easiest one. For some of them are uh, related to ADFS, so I just want to get you uh, used to with this so that we can get into the ADFS later on easier. For now, you just see the syntax of that, but you don't know the semantics of that, right? But it, it, will, it will come easier when you see the syntax and then you get the semantics. And then the last part is like, uh, I give you the, um, the uh, valid um, idea of total, and then you draw the graph. Now oh, it's so simple, right? Okay, so I'll see you next time. So, so, uh, at, um, let's see. so the the view of this is on the before the next class starts, so that I, I want to make sure that you you all practice the IDF before we move to the idea S and Sparkle. So I'll see you next time. I think they have all class pages that uh, we need to put it uh